其实呃，我我我觉得我们呃每个感恩米他一定要要要不 effort， 就是要有 fit 的那个 understanding 去 cultivate。所以当我们在 meditate 的时候，其实我们就是在 train 那个 Monday mind。To be silent, to train is a. 其实是在 train 我们的那个 silent mind.、Yeah. 所以 whatever 那个 experience you have to you go through, 它只是那个 part of the cultivation.、Yeah. 不要去啊、uh, ，just let it be. 啊，这所以我们会有很多的哦。如果我们的那个啊， uh, 我们 not understand 它的这个。我们不 understand 我们的这个 training 的话，我们就会很容易的 fall into 那个 experience、啊。我们一直想要知道，哎，这个 experience 是什么？那个又是什么？啊、yeah， but 如果我们知道它只不过是 part of the way 的时候，啊、就是 let it be、啊。连你就是一直，总之我们要就是 silent， 它 whatever 它 arise 都不要去管它。所以、so、我们的慢慢的、慢慢的，一直每天这样子的去 cultivate 和、哦、呃。Maybe about fifteen minutes or twenty minutes. So you to train that mind. Your mind will slowly, ah, then it will slowly build up that understanding and that faith. Ah, ah, it will get more and more strong. Ah, it will get more and more quiet, more and more aware that it doesn't think. So that is very important. That is mindfulness leading to heedfulness. When you are heedful, most of the time you are just aware. Mm. You only need to arise a thought when you need to use thought for living life or understanding or sharing or whatever. Apart from that, you're most of the time silent away. So you have to reach that stability of training. Then, when you develop the cultivation, like you mentioned, whatever that happened, all of your experience, no matter how fantastic meditative experience or. You realize more change. That one is not important. It's part of the way. Yes, but what is important is, does it give rise to wisdom? If it give rise to wisdom, contemplative, reflection, inquiry, or direct seeing, that is useful. It's the wisdom that free our mind, straighten our view, and let us understand. So when more and more understanding is there. That's why you need to silence your mind to observe, to be completely silent, to develop the ability to be aware of what is going on. Then you have self knowledge. You know who are you, what are you. Then you understand how your mundane mind arises, how it stir, how it create all those things. Then what is thought, the limitation of thought, how thought divide and create all this conflict, misunderstanding. Then the evil root of it. This can only be understood through mindfulness, through awareness, through the internal awareness that see all these movements. If you cannot do that, you cannot meditate. Then it become the thought very active. Thought trying to meditate. Thought trying to know. Thought trying to do. All this is thought based. It cannot give rise to true. Understanding or wisdom, but it's not that nature observing. So thought trying to understand thought. How can you free from thought? Your basically is thought trying to control thought. The controller is the control. You understand? That's how Krishna Muti put it. The controller, which is thought, is trying to control anger, emotion. But anger and emotion is another thought. Understand now? You don't go and separate them, because when you are aware, then you see clearly the delusion of thought. Because thought cannot go beyond thought. Thought is limited, egoic, has all these problems. So thought has its place in existence and life, but thought is not for us to use to cultivate the dharma. Because thought cannot penetrate beyond thought to realize the dhamma that is beyond thought, beyond mind. So thought-based meditation, thought-based knowledge, does not serve much purpose. It is not a awakening. It's not dhamma, the true dhamma. It's not the real cultivation. So see all this, understand all this, then you become very different. So today's main sharing is 
we are going deeper into the cultivation. Because unless you truly understand what the cultivation is, you all can still be trapped at the mundane mind uh, thought level. Because the mundane mind is the only instrument that people understand and they use that a lot. That's why you need to reverse all this through the training of the mind to be silent, to be aware. Then you can see how it stir, how it arise, how it become emotional, fearful, insecure, frightful, how the views, opinion, the conditioning come in and create conflict, misunderstanding. Then you start to understand why the Buddha say mind is a fall on all things, why mind is chief. Uh, when you give attention to the wrong thing, then the defilement, the asava become more and more. The unarisen one arise. Then the arisen all proliferate and become more and more powerful. But when you pay attention, the Sabha Asava Sutta, when you attend to the Four Noble Truth, the Three Turnings, the Dhamma understanding, then you realize the Asava ceases to be. The unarisen one cannot arise because you are basically contemplating, reflecting, and silencing your mind to develop wisdom, the Dhamma understanding. That's why when you pay attention to Dhamma, when you reflect on the three turning on the four noble truth, when you cultivate the noble eightfold path, when you cultivate the essential Dhamma, all these are right attention. Means you apply the thought to the right thing that you're supposed to develop understanding. You are not paying attention to negative thing, emotional thing, frightful thing, insecure, pretty. You know. That's why all the faith uh, when it's no more there, the faith, then you will develop the opposite, fear, worry, anxiety, doubt, sorrow, lament. These are all mental hindrance. And mental hindrance arise because the spiritual faculties are not there. So all this understanding you must have, then understand it clearly, write it out, so there is no more knowledge. Initially, you need to learn the teaching, you need to learn then try to put it into practice. When you put it into practice, initially the thought base keep on coming in to interfere. But the thought is very active. It's so conditioned, habitual, I thought. Then you need to continue to relax, maintain awareness and silence. That's why that part is very important. If you don't do that, you cannot realize the true mind. You cannot develop the stability or the awareness. Then you cannot do anything to your thinking mind, the mundane mind. Where the heedless think a lot, whereas the heedful never think very seldom, most of the time just away. So, heedfulness is the path to the deathless. So, you have to train your mind to be heedful. To be heedful, you must be aware, stabilize it, then make it ever mindful, then use it to cultivate. So, all the essential dharma fall back into place. So, when you understand all this, your cultivation should be done with understanding. Follow all these steps. Relax, maintain awareness, stabilize that, then become ever mindful, then use it to cultivate the three turning of the four noble truth, the essential Dhamma, everything. Uh, then constantly listening to the Dhamma, reflect, contemplate, develop the faith, sadha, then arise the initial wisdom, Yoniso, Monasakara, then Sati Sampajana, the 10 step of Avijja Sutta. So all this will fall into place. They are all connected, linked. So this understanding is very important. So like what Song wanted to explain is very beautiful because maybe now for your case, Song, you have not developed the stability of clarity or understanding. That's why you cannot put it into words. But you know basically what is all this. So if you experience anything or whatever arise during cultivation, Always remember it's part of the way. As long as you are sincere, you have faith, and you persevere, the Dhamma will unfold. So don't go and create doubt, worry, am I doing it correctly? All these are mental hindrance. Have faith, be sincere, then persevere, just do. Then continue to silence your mind, observe, dwell in the Dhamma, attend to Dhamma. 
the three turning, the four noble truth, the essential Dhamma. So all this, the daily routine, everything that I teach you, the daily mind, you will progress. You will become very beautiful. Okay?